morning, y'all. This is going to be Old Schooner Episode 3. Old Schooner Transport Episode 3. Got Anthony Allen here. Burt Burn. Rodriguez. We are the owners of Old Schooner Transport. And I just kind of want to give a little update. I hadn't done any videos in a while. and You know, Burt doesn't get a chance to join me on very many of them, unfortunately, because... He's usually down here in Mississippi um, running the admin and paperwork stuff. Bert, you want to tell them a little bit about that part? Because well, they haven't really covered on that too much. No, I mean. Basically, what do you do while I'm on the road? Pay bills. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them once you get to run the stuff. I ain't, no, I ain't I got mean, no lies to tell on that one. I mean, that, he blew out a tire the other day. I mean, uh, a little while back, a month ago the day. Yeah. Well, I mean, what, what's the tires on the Jimmy car? Well, about, about, about $1,500 for six of them? Uh, Ain't I, that what we I think it was $1,800. $1,800? See? It's expensive out here. That's not our problem right now. Our problem is, is the transmission in the truck. Well, here's, here's, here's the backstory on this, okay? So our partners, which is Hot Shot 107 out of Zanesville, Ohio, um, good people. They actually were helping me out for a while. They were allowing me to use their truck while my truck was in the shop. My truck was down for about two months initially. My truck went down at the beginning of September, and then I got it back at the end of November and then the beginning of December it went down again. Uh, we got a saying in trucking. It's called fucking trucking. There's just no no way around it. No way to nice that up. Murphy runs the trucking industry. And if y'all are not familiar with Murphy, Murphy Murphy has this law. Anything that can go, will go wrong. Ain't no lie there. Okay. Murphy runs the trucking industry. So, give a big shout out to Murphy. That, yeah. Um, so, my truck's down. I've been in Mississippi since the beginning of December, which means I've been out of work. That means... No revenue's coming into old scooter transport. What does that mean, Bert? What do you what do you mean? That we're broke? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Now I know some of y'all get on YouTube or, or get on uh, YouTube and see these guys that are real successful in it and get on Facebook and see these guys knocking down ten thousand dollars a week and showing all these nice rate cons and all this other stuff. Yeah. Make good money in hot shop. You make very good money. But the downside of it is, is when you're like us and you drive an old truck, you drive a 2013 Ram 3500, things happen. I mean, we're driving a basically nine year old truck now. I think the worst thing happened, but, uh, no, it's not the worst thing, but I mean, it, it does break down. Things do happen. And that's what that's that's what this episode is going to be about. It's going to be about cost, risk versus reward. Because even the new trucks, if y'all are on any Facebook group for hot shotting, even the new trucks are breaking down, but that's part of the death system, which I don't think it should have ever been implemented, but... That's a whole other story. Well, you know, deaf deaf is 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 mandated by the EPA, and oh. you know it is a federal law, and we we have to we have to abide by it. Unfortunately, um, I don't know what made somebody think that a corrosive liquid being poured into the being poured into a diesel engine was a good idea, but. We're blaming that on California today. Yeah, well, yeah, we're going to blame that on California. 
because they're the ones that started it. Exactly. California is the reason that we have these problems. Now California wants to go to electronic vehicles, and well, hey, guess what? I can tell you this. I'm not taking any loads to California. Taking any loads to California, bro? I mean, I can care. I can go either way on that. I prefer not to go to California. But it is what it is. Um, there are decent, there are some, some good rates out there and you can make a decent living on them. If somebody tells you that they're going to get you, you know, ten, nine, ten thousand dollars a week consistently, I can tell you that they're, they're full of it. They are. They, uh, personally, me, if you're going to try to find somebody. This is using a dispatch service. Using a dispatch service? If you can't negotiate, I don't think you should be dispatching yourself. Well, and even, but even still, you know, there are some that will blow sunshine up your ass. Well, there is that. But I'm just saying, because uh, some of these guys have got more dollars than cents. That's a fact. So, when you're looking at the trucking industry and you're trying to figure out what you're going to do if you want to start your own trucking company like we did, and we started Old Schooner Transport uh, October of 2020. I started it. I started it because I was tired of doing what I was doing. I was working for a prison in Florida, got fed up with it, decided to go ahead and start it. Bert here, one of the best friends I got in this, in this world, I trust him. You know, he signed on with me. Uh, he was working at as a, as a bar back in, at a casino here in Biloxi. He's making pretty good money over there. But we decided that we were going to try to make more money. So I pulled him out of the casino job and we went to drive for somebody else, driving somebody else's equipment. Didn't make bad money. No, they didn't pay bad. But when we were driving somebody else's equipment, we saw the rate cons and we later on decided to go ahead and get this started. And then August, we got us a truck, put it on the road, and unfortunately, it is now December, and three months out of the last five, the truck has been down. Well, hopefully, it won't be down again. Because it's had the same, pretty much the same issue. So hopefully this time they get it right. Well, the first time it went down, it was a throwout barrier. Uh, there was three. There's a, a housing on the throwout bearing, and I'm not going to get too technical here. But the three bolts that hold that throwout bearing, the throwout bearing housing over the throwout bearing, were just sitting there. They were uh, sitting there on top, and of them. all the screws were sitting in groups. Yeah. So that was problem number one. That took me down a couple of weeks. Then after that, transmission went out. And then after that, the transfer case went out, which tore the new transmission out. So I'm hoping all these issues have been are, are going to be fixed soon. And I should have my truck back in a couple of weeks. I should be back on the road, should be making money. That's my hope. Uh, but unfortunately, right now, it's kind of one of those deals to where we're kind of in a no funds coming in pattern. Um, and it does happen. You know, again, it, it's, it's trucking. There's nothing that you can really do about it. This is the, this is the bad of trucking. 
And, you know, you got to be prepared for this. You know, we sunk every dime we had, every asset that we had just about into getting this company off the ground. And sometimes you're just going to run into walls. But we've been lucky so far, so we've been very lucky. And I do want to throw again a shout out for Hot Shot 107 out of Zanesville, Ohio. They're they're the ones that are actually helping us out, getting the truck back on the road. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Ben. Um, you know they're they're the ones that are working diligently to get us back to work, and they have also helped us out with the with the cost of repairs on the front end, of course, we're going to have to pay them back and that's perfectly fine. We understand that. But, uh, well, you know, they, they've, they've done, they've, they've done very well by us. Um, and I, I do want to say that I do appreciate them. And I look forward to, uh, I look forward to continuing our relationship with them. Um, I feel that it's, it's been profitable for all. But at the same time, I've got to let y'all know that if y'all get into this, things like this are going to happen. It's it's trucking. You know, I've been in and out of a, I've been in and out of a driver's seat for the last sixteen years, and I have seen a lot of things in this industry to drag down somebody who's ill prepared for what they're going to run into on the road. Um. My advice to somebody who's going to start up in this thing is this. Things weren't reasonable through now. Uh, I would put back money for a rental truck just in case you're down. That way you could still get somewhat of a paycheck. Or, if you can afford it, go buy another truck. Have a second truck on standby. That way, if one truck goes down, you, sl you slip seat into the other truck. And you go ahead and you run. And you're still generating revenue while your first truck is down. That would be a smart way to do this. Get you an old 7.3 or something of, something like that. It's not going to be the nice new truck. Even the new trucks, they're going to go down. You know, like Bert was mentioning earlier, death system. Death is killing these trucks. Brand new under warranty. And it does not matter if the truck is under warranty and is brand new. If it goes down, what doesn't stop are the payments on that truck. You've still got payments. It doesn't matter what it is. You've got your payments. You've got your insurance that you've got to pay. If you go out and get your own authority, you still got to pay that. Um, fuel cards. If you're running fuel cards, and you know, say you're you're paying by the month using something like a service like Calm Data, or you know, Loves has a fuel card. Uh, Those are weekly paid. Okay. Guess what? Your truck goes down, and you still got that weekly payment. Pilots got their own fuel card, TCS, which is uh, usually TA and uh, and, and Petro. No, actually, you can use them. Well, yeah, you can use TCS anywhere, but you still have that fuel card payment. You have still, you've still got bills if you're down, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Is you know we're we're down. I've been out of work for almost a month. Um. My truck went down in Gaston, Alabama, and it went down right around right around the I think it was December fifth. It went down. Well, guess what? It's the twenty eighth of December. I'm still down. By the time I get my truck back, I'll be over a month with zero revenue. So what I'm saying to you is, is be prepared for this. It's going to happen. You know, my opinion on dualies are simple. 
these 3,500s and even and, and even 2,500s that people are running, they're really not meant to do, they're not really not meant to take the abuse that we put them through day in and day out. They're not meant for these 30 and 40, and, our, and, and we're apportioned for 48,000 pounds on our, on our abortion tax. Um, they're not really meant for the 30 and 40,000 pound loads that we put them on. A dually, honestly, is meant for maybe some local stuff, construction work, um, or for grandma and grandpa to go take the take the camper to Gatlinburg or take it to Disney World. It's not really meant for the abuse that we put them through, and we give them help. You know, we're running up and down mountains at 75 miles an hour with 30, 40,000 pounds on it. We're beating that truck to death. It's it's the nature of the beast. You know, things happen. Y'all need to be prepared for this. Be prepared to do some maintenance on it. Do proper pre-trips every morning. Make sure you check your oil. Make sure you check your your um, your fluids. Make sure you get up under it. See if there's any leaks. Make sure you check your tires. Check your brakes. You know, you put a lot of wear and tear on brakes. Even if you get new brakes set up, if you don't properly take care of them, you've been up and down mountains, you want those pads replaced. Absolutely, because when you're going down mountains, yes, you have trailer brakes. A lot of guys run electric trailer brakes. Personally, if you're smart, if you're going to get a trailer, you want electric over hydraulic. Gives you more stopping on your trailer and saves on the wear and tear of your truck. These are little things that you might want to look out for. Don't just go buy a 30-foot trailer and a F-250 and think you can get out here and run hot shot with it. There's limits to these vehicles. And, you know, unfortunately, even if you do everything right, at some point it's still going to go down and you need to be prepared for that. And the best way to be prepared for that is to make sure that you have everything ready to go where you can you get back on, on the road as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, we, collectively, were not prepared for that. Simply because we didn't expect it to go down that quick. You know, I ran that truck for, I ran that truck for two weeks. I came home. My dad died. I had to take care of that, and that's when the throwout bearing went out. That's when we finally heard the throw of Mary going out. Well, that too. That's true too. In those two weeks I was out, I drove over 10,000 miles. I drove from Biloxi, Mississippi, drove to Texas, drove back to Ohio, drove all the way out to Seattle, drove back to Denver, and then came home. A lot of wear and tear on that vehicle. And that's when we found out the problems. Unfortunately, if you do buy a used truck, you run the risk of having those problems. You'll find those problems, and it's not going to be when it's the most convenient. You know, I am of the opinion that this probably could have been fixed very easily had we known about the throwout bearing to begin with. We wouldn't have tore up the rest of the truck. Unfortunately, nobody's going to drop a transmission to check that. Well, if I had a shop, I would have done it. But that's nobody's going to do that. And it's just one of those things you have to know. You know, the transmission I got in my truck is a G56. It's a six-speed Mercedes transmission. Not in love with the idea of running a Mercedes transmission, but hey. That's what Dodge put in. It's that whole Dahmer Chrysler crap. Well, Mercedes used to build a good transmission once upon a time, not anymore. 
boot anyway. Yeah, but not for heavy duty vehicles. Actually, Mercedes did class did class it. You can do class it. I know they it. did. Freightliner had Mercedes engines in it. Yeah, I know. Uh, I wouldn't live with them either. But what I'm what I'm saying to y'all is be prepared. You know, shit happens. We've all seen the bumper sticker. This is a this this is just an example of shit happens, and this is what y'all need to be prepared for. If y'all are going to get into this, understand that number one, you're not going to make a million dollars in a year on this. And actually, I want to touch on that for a minute. I want to give a shout out to uh, to the um, HR recruiting guy, uh, whatever his title is, VP of of uh, operations, Caden Mercer at a uh, Hot Shot One Hundred and Seven. He told me something a while ago that somebody called him up and said, "Hey, I need to make a hundred thousand dollars this year." Let me tell you, you're not going to do it. It's not impossible if you get lucky. If you get really lucky, but you're not going to get it. You're not going to make that kind of money. You'll make a decent living. you will I mean, you may gross close to that. But look at what's coming out. Look, look at what's coming out of it. You got fuel. You got any maintenance needed for the trailer or truck. Mm-hmm. You got uh, insurance on the insurance. truck. Well, Even if you run under somebody else's authority, you still have to have bobtail insurance. That's commercial insurance. That's not cheap. Uh, the bobtail ain't that bad. It's still about, if you've got a good driver record, it's around 300 bucks a month. Okay, okay but you know, what else, you know what else you got? You got to have trailer insurance, too. You got to insure that trailer. Yeah. You got... You're, you're Tags talking. on the trailer. You, and, and let's go back to fuel for a minute. Last time I was on the West Coast, which was back in August. Yeah, but fuel prices are going down so now. Well, last time I was out there, I'm out in Seattle, and I'm seeing like almost four fifty a gallon for diesel. Here in Mississippi, you're around $3 a gallon. You go to you go to some parts of this country. God forbid you go to California, and I hate to pick on California, but they're about the worst place to go right now for fuel prices. I thought I saw five dollars at some point. I did see five dollars. I did see somebody post about five dollars a gallon in California. So five dollars a gallon. You're going to get between. Five and seven miles to the gallon average. And that's not, the truck. that's not if you're going up a mountain. <laughs> going up a mountain, you're going to get about four, depending on how heavy you are and your, and your wind resistance on the load. You can go all the you way You can down. get a light load, but if your light load is eight foot wide and 13 six tall, you're going to get your, your lowest fuel mileage, especially... Let's assume you're going to California. Let's talk about California. Let's talk about the grapevine. You go up the grapevine, uh, hauling a load like that, you you might be getting down close to three miles to the gallon at five miles to the gallon, uh, at five dollars a gallon of diesel. So every 15 miles, you're spending five dollars. This is where you've got to take this into account. I spoke to somebody the other day, said they wanted to haul cars. That's, I want to get in the hot shot so I can haul cars. Well, that's good. If you, get a car, if you get a good car trailer where you can put five, six cars on it, you might make a little bit. You can make some good money. But the problem is you need five, five six cars or better on the trailer to go there at once. Because cars are paying what? Three hundred up to six hundred bucks per car. Last time I hauled a car, it paid me four hundred and twenty-five dollars. It went from Clarksville, Tennessee, to Fort Worth, Texas. 
The last time I wanted me to haul a car was five hundred, about five hundred. And where was that going? <laughs> Too far from Texas all the way on to. Uh, that was the one from Houston to West Palm Beach. Yeah. Yeah, look up from Houston, Texas to West Palm Beach, Florida, and tell me how far that is. That's a lot of miles for little pay. You're getting less than a dollar a mile. You're getting about fifty cents a mile on that one. Now, if he'd have had, if he'd have had five, six cars on there, he'd probably made a little bit more. A lot of bit more. But unfortunately, you run your flatbed trailer. You, you're you're going to max out at two or three. And that's if you got a forty-eight foot behind you. Yeah, if you got a forty-eight foot trailer. And you better have the right license. Better have a class A. Well, I covered I covered why you need a CDL to do this in, in another video. I'm sure people are gonna disagree with that one, but y'all can check that out and I'll put a link to that one in the in the description of this well, one. Well, there's good money for non CDL people too, don't get me wrong. But it's not it's you're not gonna be you able to get haul a CDL. You you're not gonna be able to haul the same amount. Get a CDL. Go through and, and don't just go and and you know Oh well, I, I'm gonna go ahead and go go do the rodeo and road test and written test and, and get a no. Go through somebody's truck driving school. Like here in Gulfport, they got TDI Truck Driver Institute. It's three weeks. It's six thousand dollars, and it's worth its weight in gold. You'll actually learn the rules of the road. Quite honestly, unless you've got a, a, a really the way I feel is unless you got a year driving a semi. I don't think you need to be doing hot shot. And the reason I'm saying that is because you don't know the rules of the road. You don't know what you're required to do. You don't know about the hours of service. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Watch my videos. I've got a video on hours of service too. But what I'm what I'm trying to point out to y'all is you need to make sure that you're doing the right thing, you're legal and you're safe, and to maximize your profit. Be aware of what's going on, and you also need to be aware of the risks. Anything you want to add to that, Bert? You do need to be aware of the risk because it doesn't matter if you're. It doesn't matter if you can hold twenty six thousand pounds or fifty thousand pounds because you're considered, uh, or up to eighty thousand pounds. I'm sorry. You're considered the same truck even when you're in 3,500. You're still a commercial motor vehicle. That's another thing. Your F-250 that you got pulling that 30-foot gooseneck trailer that you got that you only got, you know, 18,000 pounds gross on. Guess what? You may as well stamp Peterbilt over that Ford semi. Because you are a semi. And I cover this in another video. But yes, you you are still considered the same thing as a semi. You hit somebody, you're still you're a professional driver. You're at fault. Yep. You are automatically at fault unless you've got protection. And there is protection. There is a little fifty dollar investment that you can make at any Walmart or truck stop in this country. Walmart. Sam's Club, Target, Costco, whatever. Uh, I would say Radio Shack. Radio Shack's out of business now. Um, and it's a little thing. It's about that big. It's called a dash cam. That will save you. Well, either, well, either hurt you or save you, depending on what you did. Well, it's a friend of me. It is a friend of me. If you're doing something stupid, it's your enemy. And guess what? It's still admissible in court. If you're doing the right thing, it's your best friend. So, anyway, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, hope this video helped y'all out. And if you want more information about Old Scooter Transport, feel free to give me a call. My number is 228-697-4009. If you want information about Hot Shot 107, I'll go ahead and give uh, give their phone number. You can call Caden at 740-297-5907. He'll be glad to hook you up and tell you about the programs they have over at Hot Shot 107.
Thank you for watching. Thank you. Happy New Year to all of you.